Today someone commented on my channel, you should delete this channel, and you know, you're, you're right, and I think about it every day. <laughs> but in the meantime, before I do, let's talk about uh, Biden's State of the Union address. Um, well, first of all, he spent every two minutes attacking Democrats or Trump or whatever, I'm sorry, attacking the Republicans. So how do you expect the country to work together on climate change or any other issue if you're, if you're attacking half the people in the room every couple of minutes? Um, so, yeah, I, I don't even think if he, even if he had a, a good plan for any of the things he talked about, that would be possible when all the people basically um, hate you and, they, and deservedly so because that's how I feel about people who insult me. I'm sorry. It's just human nature, okay? You can fault, insult me every two minutes. I have no chance to, like, respond. Like, you can get up in there, big stage with big TV, say anything you want about me, and I can't say anything back to you, whether I'm a Republican or I'm on the Supreme Court justice. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I think. It's nothing to do with Democrats or Republicans. Um, I'm just no fan of Biden. But he really took the cake with the climate uh, issue. So let's go to the... Uh, to the, to the BBC, no, is it, yeah, no, CNN did a full transcript and a fact check, but it's a ridiculous fact check. So Biden said, well, he first goes, we are also making history by confronting the climate crisis, not denying it. Oh, well, you know, good job there, not denying it anymore. Okay. I'm taking the most significant action on the climate ever in the history of the world. I need some full screen for this. The most significant action on climate change in the history of the world ever. I mean, <laughs> yes, but I changed one word. Not, to, not significant, but insignificant. It says, I'm cutting our carbon emissions by half by 2030. Uh, yeah, no, that ain't going to happen. Uh, <laughs> He says he's going to create uh, all these energy jobs, and he's going to install 500,000 electric vehicle charging stations. Charging stations have nothing to do with CO2 being released in the atmosphere from the burning of fossil fuels, period. All right, so let's go to some of the data. Now, you know, I might lose, lose you guys quickly, so let me get to the first data. That's th This is the chart you need to have on your browser that you need to basically look at whenever you want to put things in perspective. Now, this is from NASA, you know, the government, you know, Biden's own government, our own government, you know, they don't have any political thing here. They're just measuring the carbon dioxide in the world. They have a few measuring stations in Hawaii, America, wherever. Then they take these measuring stations and they measure the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. And the CO2 in the atmosphere comes from fossil fuels. That's already been decided. There's no debate about that anymore. And here you can see that the CO2 is rising every single year. It is going up, which means whatever you think you're doing in the background, you are still burning more and more fossil fuels, or you're burning the same very high amount, and they continue to add carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. There's no, there's no proof or data or anything that it's here. But he says he's going to cut it. All right, so I'm going to go through these arguments very quickly. This is U.S. energy-related carbon dioxide emissions, and it's gone in 23 years, right? It's gone from 6 million to 5 million, million metric tons or whatever, right? And he's saying in six years he's going to cut that in half? How? How? How does building a charging station cut that in half? Well, we'll get to that in a second. And now here's another uh, uh, graph of climate emissions in the U.S., and this is carbon dioxide. Now, you can see here it went down by 5% during the pandemic. Think about it. During the pandemic, everything is closed down, and it only went down 5%. Well, why? Because most of it is not like when we're just going out partying or going to the office. It's like heating our homes, cooling our homes, building new cars, building pieces for building new stuff for our houses or whatever. So even with the pandemic, it didn't go down. So the pandemic, when everything shut down, it only went down 5%. And now you say in six years it's going to go down 50%? Like, you're on crack. <laughs> okay? All right. So let me explain what the core problem is here. And by the way, I'm going to just tell you the, the solution very quickly. Because, again, you might want to leave right now. The solution is very simple. Biden gets on. He says, listen, we're going to measure all of our fossil fuel burning, whether we burn that fossil fuel here in America, right, where we take some oil out of the Texas ground and we burn it in a car, or 
we have China build us some batteries for our cars and they burn tons of coal and fossil fuels and they release the CO2 in China. And then they ship us the battery here and we put it in a Tesla or whatever, right? That, yeah, wherever it is, whatever any American buys something in the world, we say how much fossil fuels were burnt to make it and we put that in our number. That number, I'm guesstimating, is about the equivalency of 20 billion barrels of oil a year. So he says, oh, next year, we're only going to burn 19 barrels of uh, 19 billion barrels of oil. And then 17 barrels, you know, we're going to set a cap on how much oil that we burn. Because again, the fossil fuels you burn add the CO2 to the atmosphere. So we're going to cut down. And, you know, that means that, yeah, you know, prices will go up. So you probably, you know, thermostat in your house you, in the winter, you may need to have it just a little bit warmer in the summer, just maybe just a little bit warmer. So in the winter, just a little bit colder, in the summer, just a little bit warmer, you know, whatever, that there's going to be a limit. We're all going to have a limit and we're going to have to like austerity plan, right? Which all the bankers always want all countries to do when we hit like a recession, right? You've got to go on austerity. You've got to cut back. Well, you know, we got to do the cut back thing here too. That's the only solution. And what he doesn't look at, he doesn't look at his own data from NASA, he doesn't look at this in a realist. He didn't quote a scientist. He made this up like this huge lie on his own. So even, even at 80, well, you know, give him credit that he could come up with such a lie. Or who knows what came up with such a lie. So anyway, I just wanted to do this rant. I mean, his whole speech is an hour long of stuff that I, I mean, I could do 51 hour rants on all the nonsense that he said. But again, to recap, all he did during the State of the Union is antagonize half the country. So we can't work together. Whatever the plan is that we have for climate change, we're not going to work together because he's just going out making enemies. And I don't want to hear, oh, well, the Republicans do it too or this, that. No, 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 no. You know, all I know is, you know, what I see with this guy. OK, now, if they're bad, too, I, that doesn't make a difference. We can only deal with what we have. And so that's number one. And number two Nothing he said has anything to do with the science. It is a bold, outright um, claiming that you're going to reduce CO2 by building charging stations. Where is that logic? There is no logic. You are just totally, oh, I'm just getting so mad. Okay, till next time.